Hello. Most coaches appreciate that in doing powerful work with their clients, there's always a blend of being and doing. Who you are and how you show up with your client has an impact in the work that you do. However, I believe that uh, most coaches do not fully appreciate the impact of their habitual outlook or personality or what I call energetic bias that it has on the coaching. And in having the privilege of supervising many coaches and witnessing so many different coaching styles and approaches and coaching models, you can't help but notice a few things and notice what works well and what doesn't. And I frequently notice that even well-trained, very experienced and very effective coaches can tend to get stuck in what I call one energetic mode. So what do I mean by energetic mode? Well, in, in modern psychology, there are countless personality assessments that attempt to categorize uh, our, our habitual approach to situations and, and people. You know, people can tend to be more introverted or extroverted, high energy, low energy, more focused on thinking or feeling, more drawn to strategic thinking versus, you know, getting things done and being practical. However, at a more fundamental level, some of the world's great spiritual traditions have long noticed certain common energetic tendencies. For example, in the Hindu or the, the yogic philosophies, they talk about the three gunas, the different energies that make up all of life. But I think uh, most people are probably more familiar with the Chinese or Taoist philosophy of the yin and, and the yang. And very, very briefly, um, there's just this observation that these these two seemingly opposite energies um, make up everything in life. They seem opposite, but in, in reality, they're interconnected. And, and the universe is made of blends of these different energies. The yin is, is often seen as the more, the more reflective, the, the more passive. It's often seen as a, a feminine energy. And the yang is, is, is seen as a more active, more dynamic uh, energy. And the, the Tao, or the, the wise path, is achieved in, in balancing these energies. And in our culture, we certainly get very well trained and rewarded to cultivate our yang energy, our get things done, uh, accomplish things energy. And this is reflected in how many coaches approach working with their clients. There can be an overemphasis on, okay, what needs to get done here? What's the next step? How are we gonna, how are we gonna get there? And if the majority of the coaching conversation or the focus, just the complete focus of the coaching conversation is, is based on this yang energy, it can lead to uh, accomplishments, but often those accomplishments don't have any enduring meaning. It's as if, you know, you help a client accomplish something and um, no sooner that they get that done, then, you know, some sort of anxiety arises in them and they're looking for what's next, what's, what's the next thing for me. Um, it's really the, the presence of the, uh, the yin or the reflective or the being energy that allows us to be far more present with whatever's happening. It allows us to have a bigger, bigger picture perspective. And yet, if there's just yin energy present, then perhaps nothing ever gets done. So really the goal is to have a balance between the yin and the yang. And such a balance uh, facilitates greater clarity, more meaning, perhaps more contact to intuition, the possibility of uh, growth and transformation. A, a good balance of yin and yang ensures that any doing really is rooted in or arises out of, you know, the being. And balancing these energies leads to wiser living and, uh, and wiser doing. Now, modern neuroscience has helped our 
understanding of this topic. And in, in neuroscience, uh, they talk about the task positive network part of our brain as kind of the tactical, getting things done uh, part of our mind. Whereas the default mode network is the more reflective, introspective, perhaps more intuitive part of our, our mind. And these two areas of our brain, we know, they're, they're independent circuits that one is on or the other is on. They're both not on at the, at the same time. And if you get stuck in one of these areas, if you're stuck in just the getting things done area, then you're not accessing the bigger picture. You're not accessing your intuition. All incredibly important things to make sure that whatever you're doing is important and gets done well. And um, good old Albert Einstein, you know, had this wonderful observation that our, our biggest problems are never solved at our current level of thinking. If we're stuck in just the doing mode, if we're stuck in our task positive network, then we're not accessing the big picture. We're not accessing the intuition. So we can often get stuck. So the great teachings and neuroscience and really just our common, you know, common sense and, and experience argue for a balance of these energies and remind us that even, you know, if we ever find ourselves stuck, you know, going around in circles, if you see your commitment to something uh, or your joy flagging, then perhaps, you know, you're simply not getting a critical insight on, on this important issue. It might be a signal that you need to better balance your, your being and doing energies. So um, really experienced coaches, I think really masterful coaches, somehow know this, they somehow intuit it, and they don't get stuck in one area. They are aware of their own energetic tendencies and the impact that that has on their clients for good and bad. Uh, they know that emotions are contagious and if they're not conscious of their kind of natural energetic imprint, um, then they're not going to see see it or really be able to manage it or, or play play with it to maximize the impact on your client work. So let me give you a, a concrete example of how this shows up in, in coaching. I was recently supervising a coach who was preparing for their MCC, Master Certified Coach, designation with the ICF. And um, they were a very competent coach. They're a very experienced coach. And in this particular call, the client was um, really talking about, uh, you know, they've been so busy and kind of active that they, they weren't sure the, where they're going. They weren't sure they were heading in the right direction. And so the coach took this as a clue to help the client, you know, come back to the big picture, uh, revisit their vision, revisit their values, reflect on the options they have and whether what they were doing was in service of those uh, important markers. And this was all solid lines of coaching inquiry. The, the coach knew the client would benefit from being in a more reflective big picture uh, frame of mind and you know, did their best to coach the client to, to, to get there. However, the coach was simply unaware of the full impact of their own energetic imprint, meaning the tone of the coach's voice, you know, the volume with which they spoke, the, the speed or the cadence of their, of their conversation were still conveying a kind of, well, let's move through this, let's get this done you know, uh, unconsciously, perhaps a little, I'm in a hurry kind of energy was coming through, which was indeed kind of the everyday energetic mode of this particular coach. And uh, this was just how they showed up in the world. This was, um, you know, their natural energy. And even when they were dialing it back a bit in service of helping their client get to a more reflective place, it was still conveying a kind of let's get this done message to the client, which obviously would impede, you know, the impact of their coaching. So when this was pointed out to the coach, um, you know, the recognition was kind of immediate. They really knew that about themselves and, and it became fully apparent, um, you know, that this had an impact and, and how desirable it would be to have kind of a broader range of energetic states they could draw on with 
their clients. And so we began to explore how they might better manage their, you know, their kind of energetic states, find a better balance for them and, and thus increase the impact. And when I talk about this topic to coaches, I often use the analogy of a, a musical instrument, say a, a violin or a guitar. We might all be able to play a simple tune on you know, one string, but there's a real limit to what can be done there. However, when you add a few more strings to your instrument, there's a much wider range of music that's possible to play. And, and similarly, as a coach, if you are aware of your energetic set point, your kind of go-to one string, you can still leverage it and leverage your strengths there whenever it best serves your client. However, when, um, when desirable, you can shift into a different, uh, a different mode, um, perhaps a more reflective mode or a more active mode. Um, you can shift into uh, and to play another string. And if you work on this, you simply end up with more options. You, you have more strings on your, on your coaching instrument. And it gives you more choices as to how you can show up with your client. And, and, and this is a valuable asset. Now, in, in practical terms, how do you do this? How do you, you know, kind of manage your yin, your yang? How do you balance the being and doing? Well, maybe I can just share uh, an example from my life. For most of my life, I have been a habitual Yankster. At least once I got through my teens, I developed a strong kind of work ethic, a strong bias to kind of learn and grow and achieve and want to improve things and get things done. And this has served me well in many situations and, and, and uh, you know, different accomplishments. However, uh, it can unmanaged translate into me being not as present as I would like to be, perhaps not enjoying the journey, being more focused on what's next, and uh, perhaps not sufficiently considering the pros and cons and the overall, you know, value of the many things that I have committed to pursue. So I've long known that due to my natural tendency to kind of be more of a, you know, get things done person, that I have to consciously dial up my reflective or, or yin energy, which for well over 20 years now, I've tried to do every day by prioritizing, you know, quiet times, perhaps breaks between client calls, um, lots of space in my life, spending more time in nature, uh, being more attentive, to thoughts or whatever thoughts or emotions that are present for me before I accept them as reality and kind of act on them. And I've benefited hugely by connecting to people or teachers or perhaps practices that help uh, me really draw out more of the reflective uh, being energy in my day-to-day -day living. So that's, you know, kind of how I've approached this topic. How about you? You know, what, what is your takeaway, uh, meaningful takeaway from this topic? I'd like you to consider that and perhaps I'll just leave this with you as an, as an inquiry. What is your default energetic mode? And what is really the impact of that in your life and your coaching work? for better or for worse. And secondly, what if any changes might help you add a string or two to your coaching violin so that you can play even prettier music with uh, your clients and the important people in your life? Okay, so um, that's the uh, that's a thought for today. And as usual, if you've learned something here, uh, please leave me a comment uh, or like and share this video with uh, other coaches or people in your life. Okay, take care everybody. Bye-bye.